Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McCrae. Cancer of the liver, which we really haven't talked about before, um, or not recently, it can be either primary or secondary. That is, it either starts in the liver, primary liver cancer, or it spreads there from someplace else. Some other cancer in the body spreads to or metastasizes to the liver. Now, the most common primary cancer of the liver is called hepatocellular carcinoma, or HCC. The liver? The liver. Do you remember about the liver? You know, it's that organ now kind of put your hand right on the upper part of your abdomen on the right side. Okay. Just beneath your diaphragm, above your stomach, about the size of a football. Well, yours is the size of a small football. I've never seen one, but I've heard. (laughs) Well, it's, uh, have you ever eaten liver? Not if I can help it. Yeah. Well, it's, the liver is sort of the, the refinery of your body. It filters the blood, it detoxifies chemicals, it metabolizes drugs, And it secretes bile that aids in your digestion. It's been said, really, that the liver lets you live. Okay, back to liver cancer now. Thanks for the little diatribe there. Now we're back over to liver cancer. Hepta, how do you say that? Hepatocellular. Hepatocellular carcinoma. It occurs, what he said, it occurs most often in people with chronic (laughs) liver diseases such as cirrhosis caused by hepatitis B or hepatitis C infection. Until recently, there was only one FDA-approved drug for the treatment of HCC, but... In 2017, a second drug was approved, and more treatment options may be just around the corner. Here to discuss liver cancer and new treatment options is Dr. Steve Alberts. Dr. Alberts is Division Chair of Medical Oncology at Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. Welcome to the program, Dr. Alberts. Great to see you. Nice to have you on the program. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, I think, if I'm uh, not wrong, if I'm I think, if I'm right about this, liver cancer is relatively rare. It doesn't even make the top 10 of cancers that affect people in the United States, correct? In the United States, that's correct. It's rare as cancers go, but around the world, it's one of the most common cancers. Is that right? Yeah. And why is that? Mainly because of things like hepatitis C or hepatitis B that are much more common in Asia, certain parts of Africa, as well as some other risk factors in Africa, traditionally, there have been some contaminants of food, particularly uh, with uh, peanuts, where you can have a a mold that grows in there that uh, creates a toxin called aflatoxin that leads to liver cancer. So between hepatitis and certain toxins in the environment or with uh, foods, that has led to a high rate of liver cancer. So where you live is actually one of the risk factors. It is, absolutely. (laughs) Other risk factors? The risk factors... Do, I guess we mentioned them briefly. Hepatitis, sure. some kind of liver disease, cirrhosis. Right. The Anything that can cause damage to the liver, whether it's viruses like hepatitis B or hepatitis C, as well as alcohol traditionally that creates problems with uh, liver damage leading to cirrhosis. And more recently in the United States, as well as other developing countries, obesity is starting to cause problems. As people become more heavy, they develop uh, fatty infiltrate in their liver that leads to chronic inflammation and ultimately cirrhosis. In the United States, that's now becoming the most rapidly developing cause of liver cancer as we have better treatments to control hepatitis C and hepatitis B. What are the symptoms if a patient has liver cancer and how do you diagnose it? Yeah, early on, there may not be a lot of symptoms that often when people come in with liver cancer, it's because they have problems related to their liver function from their underlying cirrhosis. In that setting, usually you'll start to see people become progressively more tired, maybe start to develop fluid in their abdomen that causes some extension or bloating of their abdomen. Uh, People may start to notice that they're losing some muscle mass as their liver isn't performing the functions that it needs to do. But the liver has a lot of excess capacity, right? It does. And so certainly in a a younger person with even cirrhosis or a healthy older person with cirrhosis, they may not be aware of it early on. And that's certainly one of the concerns if somebody has underlying hepatitis C that can be a very chronic disease, they may go on for years not realizing they have the infection, let alone are developing progressive cirrhosis. And then on top of that, start to develop a small cancer that really has no symptoms unless it starts to block up 
the drainage of bile out of the liver, or it spreads to some other part of the body where it's starting to cause some problems. So if, if the bile duct is, is blocked uh, or your liver is really sick, then you get jaundiced, right? Because that builds up in your bloodstream? Correct. Although it generally to become jaundiced, one has to have pretty advanced either cirrhosis or the cancer in a critical part of the liver where it's starting to block up that drainage of the bile. And how do you confirm the diagnosis? There are several ways to do that. Uh, with modern radiologic techniques, with the different scans that we have, there are ways to identify an abnormality in the liver, and using an MRI or a CT scan, we can begin to define whether something looks like a cancer or uh, a non-cancerous uh, process within liver, such as a cyst or some other benign change. Um, but with the way the tumor takes up the contrast that's given intravenously to highlight abnormalities in the liver, it can show that something is much more likely to be a cancer. In addition to that, with some forms of liver cancer, uh, uh, some causes of liver cancer like hepatitis B, there's much more likely to be an elevated marker in the blood called alpha feta protein that can go up and be uh, a easy indicator that something's going on in the liver that may re represent uh, liver cancer. And confirm it with a biopsy. You, you, in some cases, yes, it requires a biopsy. In other cases, the findings from the imaging with a scan as well as a blood test may be enough to confirm that indeed it is liver cancer and you don't need to do a biopsy in that setting. So what are the treatment options? When a liver cancer is caught early, before it, it becomes large or starts to spread elsewhere, there are a lot of potential approaches. If a person's liver is working very well, it's possible in some cases to go in and surgically remove the cancer. In other cases, if a person's liver isn't working well enough where surgery would be safe or the tumor's in a, a part of the liver that would just be difficult to remove, there are ways to stick a needle into the tumor and heat it up, uh, what's called ablation, to be able to burn it out or freeze it. If the tumor starts to spread through different parts of the liver, there are ways that we can infuse something directly into the liver, be that chemotherapy or radioactive substance to try to kill a lot of the cancer. And for people who might be a candidate, there's strict criteria. In some cases, if a person has underlying liver disease that's becoming quite severe and a small amount of cancer there, they may be a candidate for a liver transplant. So tell us about the new drug you've got. For the people where the cancer is spread beyond the ability to do something directly to the liver, that it's spread outside the liver, or that it just isn't possible to do anything directly to the liver, there are now several different approaches with drug therapy. Uh, for the last 10, 15 years, we've had a drug called serafinib. It's a non-chemotherapy drug that works to help treat the cancer and usually keeps it stable. But more recently, a, a new drug came along in 2017 called regorafenib. They have these wonderful names. Regorafenib. Yes. And regorafenib, <laughs> like serafinib, is not a chemotherapy drug, but does things to shut off some of the genes that cause the cancer to grow and restrict some of its blood flow. Those two drugs have helped to control liver cancer and its growth, extending the time uh, that we can keep it under control and hopefully allow newer, better options to come along. This year has been exciting in that there are several new things coming forward. The FDA earlier this year approved a form of immunotherapy with a drug called nivolumab based on some early information to show that in about 25% of people, this type of immunotherapy also works in liver cancer, irregardless of the cause of the liver cancer. We have about 30 seconds left. What's new in liver cancer research? Yeah, right now there are a lot of new drugs coming along. They're focused again on uh, gene or molecular changes that are important in liver cancer that are showing promise either used in combination with immunotherapy or separate from that. So a lot of things that look hopeful on the horizon and certainly a lot better than we were just a couple of years ago. All right, some good news on liver cancer with Dr. Steve Alberts. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.